Okay, now moving on to the next presentation, we have uh, Shanyu Shi from Astronergy. She is the product manager at Astronergy. She is going to talk about the value of rectangular wafer for top corn modules. Um, I understand from you that uh, you would like to share the slides from our end, right? Shanyu. Hi, Sharon. Uh, I'd like to share the presentation right. myself, and if it doesn't work, I'll ask for help. Okay, that's great. Yeah. Okay, so let me share the screen. Mm -hmm. And uh, can you see my slide? Yes. Okay, great. And thanks, Shavan. And hello, everyone. My name is Zoe. I'm from Astrology. And it's my pleasure to give a presentation in this conference. Um, so my topic today is values of rectangular wafer for top -com modules. Um, I'm going to have three sections. And in the first section, I'm going to briefly introduce the background of the rectangular wafer and the top manufacturer's choice. Um, it seems like a stereotype thinking that silicon wafer need to be square shaped, and this may limit some very good designs. And by thinking outside of the box, when we come to the wafer shape, um, rectangular wafer provide us a very good breaking point. Um, and uh, for now, the dominant rectangular wafer dimension include 182.2 times 191.6, and 182 times 210, and we will refer them as 191 rectangular and 210 rectangular respectively. And, and so far, the dominant um, manufacturers have their own uh, rectangular wafer models, and the, the model format includes 191 rectangular 72 and 210 rectangular 66. And the good news is the model dimensions have been unified as 2382 times 1134, which is friendly to the supply chain and downstream compatibility. And why rectangular wafer becomes so popular? Um, well, the original reason is because we want to optimize the use of container space and reduce the transportation cost. And at the same time, this type of module also provide us a high power output, which is good to lower the system BOS cost. And then this slide shows the manufacturer's choice uh, for utility scale. And you can see there are five manufacturers uh, choosing the 210 rectangular 66 modules. And Astrology is also on the side of the 210 rectangular. And these five manufacturers cost for 66% of the global fuel shipment. Um, one well, of the reason for us to choose 210 rectangular 66 uh, is because it provides a high power output with low risks comparing with other large format modules. Uh, we know we can improve the power output of the modules by having more cells in the module or increase the wafer area. And a uh, representative for larger wafer is 266 module. And this type of model has a very large model area, which brings mechanical performance risks. And it has to be packed in a um, uh, long side portrait for configuration with, uh, with a high center of gravity, which introducing some risks to, uh, of falling over during the transportation, unpacking, and installation. And it also brings cu current risks, um, uh, high current risks. And on the other, um, other side, um, the, the representative for most cells is 18278 module. And this module has a large uh, voltage, uh, which uh, gives a small strain size and increase the BOS cost. And it also brings hotspot risks. And in contrast, uh, the 210 rectangular 66 module, it provides high power output with medium module dimension, uh, so medium uh, moderate mechanical performance risks, and it also provides moderate current and low voltage, and um, it will maximize the overall advantage. Um, so far, we were talking about the utility application, and then for the residential application, we expect 
the modules to be smaller in dimension to um, for for easy installation. And rectangular wafer also provides several um, options for uh, the multi design of re uh, a residential application. And uh, the wafer size include um, one on one point six rectangular wide. 188 rectangular, 210 rectangular, and 186.8 rectangular. And we have different um, cell quantity and cutting methods, uh, the 54 cell half cut and the 48 cell third cut. And we have different cell gap design and their multi dimension is the same, which is 1762 times 1134, uh, which is smaller than two meters square. And this column shows the power output um, and this is based on the same cell efficiency. And by comparison, we can see the first design is um, gives the best power output, um, and it is uh, one on one point six rectangular, fifty four cell half cut, negative gap, and um, and Astrology's residential product is also based on this design. Then in the second part, I will introduce our uh, rectangular wafer modules for both utility scale and um, uh, residential application. Uh, for utility scale application, we have Astro N7. Uh, it's made of, uh, it's in the format of 210 rectangular 66 uh, with double glass design. And its dimension is 2382 times 1134 times 30. And then for residential application, we have Astro N7S, and it's in the format of one non one rectangular 54 with a dimension of 1762 times 1134 times 30, which is smaller than two meters square. Um, as we mentioned, the N7S adopt one on one rectangular wafer and N7 adopt 210 rectangular wafer. And if we compare them with a traditional 182 millimeter square shaped wafer, the wafer area can be increased by 5.7% and 15.6% respectively. And besides the uh, wafer dimension, we also improve our top count cell structure. Uh, we adopt laser dome selective emitter technology. And by having this technology, we can have um, the heavy doping at the metal contact region and some light doping at non-contact region. Um, and by doing so, we can reduce the g naught metal and g naught emitter while improving the conductivity. And um, as a result, the, we can increase the fuel factor and the VOC. So the efficiency can be increased by 0.25 to 0.35%. And we also adopt another technology called laser-induced firing. And during this process, a bias voltage and strong light injection can produce a high current density, which result in localized high temperature. And it will um, allow the silver and the silicon to diffuse into each other to form ohmic contact. And because we, we have already improved the contact resistant, resistivity, uh, we can reduce the optimum peak firing temperature, which reduces the damage to the passivation layer of top count cells. And this process can also improve uh, the top count cell efficiency by 0.3%. Um, our Astro N7S product for the residential application adopt zero bus bar and tiling film design. And this, um, the zero bus bar and tiling film interconnection can be achieved by a prefixion of the solder, uh, solder ribbon with encapsulation film and a cell in a one-step process. And then the ohmic contact is formed during lamination. Um, and the whole process temperature is below 150 degrees Celsius. And due to the absence of high temperature soldering process, uh, we can lower the thermal stress and additionally, the tiling film allows uh, the negative cell gap. And because it, the film will fill in the cell overlap and plays a role of buffer, uh, so it can effectively reduce the risk of macro cracks at the edge of the PV cells. And then for our Astro N7, the utility scale application product, we adopt a super multi-bus bar. 
Um, and by having more bus bars, we can improve the conductivity because it has shorter current transmission paths and reducing the series resistance. And we can improve the reliability um, by improving tolerance for cell macro cracks and fracture of fingers. And more cell and more uh, more bus bars will provide more uniform stress distribution. And more importantly, uh, super multi bus bar can reduce the cost of the cell because it reduces the sewer paste consumption. Um, and for N7, we have some uh, cell gaps. And in order to better utilize the light at the cell gap, we adopt light redirecting film to replace traditional wet glazing coating on the rear side of the glass. And this film is composed of three layers. The reflective layer is made of alloy coating with high reflectivity, good weather resistance, and attention. And the support layer is made of PET with low shrinkage. And a adhesive layer is made of EVA. And by having this material, we can improve our multi-power output because it can reflect more light back to the front side of the module. And we can improve the power generation because it have uh, it has a smaller uh, shading on the rear side. Now we can also improve the reliability because of its uniform stress. And then in the third section, I will discuss about the values to customers. Um, comparing with um, the square shaped wafer 18272 module, um, the rectangular wafer module has a higher power output by the same module width. And this will effectively reduce the BUS cost if the, uh, the module configuration is portrait, is in portrait. Uh, let's say we have portrait configuration, and if we have the same uh, panel quantity, then we can have the same cable consumptions and talk to trigger talk to the length. Um, and, but if the multiple power output is higher, uh, we can increase the DC capacity of the system. And that's why the, uh, the DC VOS cost can be effectively reduced. And the right hand side table shows the VOC and the uh, stream size, stream power for uh, the three modules. Um, and we know the smaller the VOC, the larger the stream size. And because 210 rectangular 66 um, has the smallest VOC, uh, we can connect additional two panels per strain for a 1500 watt system, comparing with 18272 and 101 rectangular 72. And this slide shows uh, why a larger string size can reduce the tracker cost. Um, so generally speaking, for a horizontal single axis tracker, we can have three strings uh, per tracker. And if we have um, a larger string size, we can increase the panel quantity per tracker uh, and also the, uh, the power capacity per tracker. And remember that each tracker need a set of uh, tracking, controlling, and the driving parts. And the cost of this, uh, these parts can be reduced by a larger uh, capacity. And that's why 210 rectangular 66 has a lower tracker cost. Uh, lower freight cost, as we mentioned in the beginning, um, the rectangular wafer module is designed to uh, to better utilize the space of the container and to reduce the freight cost. And uh, uh, when we compare to the one to seventy two module, our rectangular uh, wafer module can increase the voltage per container by three uh, sorry four point three percent, which is eighteen kilowatt. And the safe freight cost saving is zero point zero four cents per watt. And we also conducted LC analysis um, in various um, scenarios and all the to compare the three modules and all of the, the, the three modules are top come by facial design. And in the first case, we assume the project was in, uh, is in China uh, with fixed tilt track tracking system and the center in border, central in border. And in this um, this case, the, the 210 rectangular and the 191 rectangular, they provide like similar values uh, in terms of LCOE, but they are definitely better than 18272 module. 
And then in the second case, is uh, it is in UAE, and uh, we um, replace the fixed tier ranking system with the tracker system, and we still use central in water. And in this case, 210 rectangular module provide a better result than one on one rectangular because a larger strain size can reduce the tracker cost. And then in the third case is in UK um, with the tracker system. And in this time, we uh, we use strain in water to replace central in water. And uh, uh, and 210 rectangular gives uh, much um, a, a significant reduction in the LCOE um, because we know that the, the strain inputs is it, it depend on uh, because sorry because uh, it can uh, improve the DC to AC ratio and it can reduce the AC side VOS cost and that's why this module uh, can give us a best LCOE and that's all for my presentation today uh, you're welcome to ask any questions thank you hey uh, thank you very much for this uh, nice presentation so it's also very interesting to see that uh, um, you know the laser uh, based uh, uh, sintering process can improve the absolute efficiency by as much as 0.3% uh, as you mentioned so what is the base value uh, for this efficiency improvement so wh where is the uh, the benchmark the benchmark is like uh the cell without any light induced firing process, but it's still on um, its uh, optimum temperature of firing. So okay. that's and, and what, process. So what, what is the efficiency of that particular cell? So when you said it's 0.3% gain, so what's the basic efficiency on which um, you are track. gaining? Um, the benchmark is like uh, 26.1. 20, uh, oh, wow. Yeah, 26. Because this is our research uh, efficiency. Mm. Okay. So can you, it's also very exciting to see that uh, on a 26 base level, you were able to increase 0 0.2 to 0.3%. So yeah. have you also looked into the reliability aspects um, because so far it's still in the R and D stage, um, yeah. So, so this will be our next step, mass production. So, uh, once this is turning to mass production, we can do definitely do the reliability test. And, and yeah. when do you expect? Uh, so, do you have any roadmap when you can go there? Yeah, just in next quarter. Oh, already next quarter. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. And I okay, think this is, this is the cell technology, and most of the reliability com uh, depends on the uh, the module encapsulation material. So I don't think there is a mm -hmm. lot of uh, uh, reliability issue with this technology. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much for this Thank very you. nice Thank presentation. You. Okay. Thanks. And, uh, you know, uh, could you please uh, stay online? And I think there are a lot of questions in the chat yeah, window. Yeah, sure, you know, sure. Whenever you can answer, that would be great if you can stay back and answer. Yeah, sure. Okay, thank you. Thank you.